My nose hurts. So I you got guys looked in the face yesterday pretty hard. Oh, really? really? Yeah, you can feel like the soreness of the cartilage. Oh yeah. Right here, you like just that's where really my, my brand new cartilage is. Too. Could, that's what I, I'm being I don't told. feel like it's broke. I heard a crunch one time and I thought it broke. Because I heard <laughs> when the guy punched me directly in the face and I, I have to check all the time if things are broken. My, my coach goes, if you can talk, your jaw's not broken. There's but I'm like, it hurts really if bad. I, if I pinch. You might have if I hurt it, it hurts more. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, since your nose isn't even a bone, if you you're not technically breaking a bone, you're just breaking the cartilage, something right? like that. But uh, what are you doing when you're like resetting it? And I see people. Oh, I've never, it, I've it never cracks. done that. Where I see <laughs> people do that where it's in movies and stuff, but like you can't. I watched a movie the other day. I actually, feel like uh, like moving around. Apparently, there's no nose bone. It's just like a hole. Yeah, but yeah. Then you have cartilage. It's cartilage. It's like cartilage, really hard cartilage. Okay. Yeah. Well, this is supposed to move. This yeah. is all brand new for me. The, actually, starting right here, all the way to that. Like this right here used to be really like floppy and nothing, but now it's like there's something there because oh. they put new cartilage in, and oh, then they wow. put new cartilage right here inside. The so tip that's of what my you're nose. talking about when you're like, "Don't break my nose." Yeah, yeah, uh, because <laughs> this has all been reconstructed. So. Oh god! Honestly, after the fight, I I'm kind of already accepting it. I feel like I'm gonna have to get a, another rhinoplasty or a septoplasty. Now, is this gonna make you go easy on him? Well, is the podcast started already? No, well, we haven't introduced it. Oh, okay. I'm, can, I'm waiting to introduce. I was like, it. we can lead in with casual conversation and introduce it. Like okay. we can already have started it. If okay. You want. This is the alternative episode. Yeah. Indie well, indie art. Well, I'm scared. Dad will. To. Yeah, yeah, dad. Dad's gonna go ham on you. I just hope dad doesn't. Uh, I, I just want him to go easy on the nose because now now hearing that, do you think when you tell dad that Matt wants dad to go easy on the nose, is dad gonna go easy? That I wouldn't know. Is it dad is a robot and I don't know what they're <laughs> pumping in him and programming they're giving him. He doesn't have all his emotions either. I mean, it would have been easier if you were fighting me, but now you're fighting this yeah, robot. Yeah, well, I, I thought I was out. fighting you. and um, I thought so too. And until. I'm really, I, I again, I again, I would like, I extend my sincerest apologies for that diss track because it, if I had done more, you know, if, if I had known that I, that I, was fighting dad and not you, I would have uh, never made that diss track. And I just, everything I said in that just to, it was just a joke. So you don't even, need to, just don't even ever watch it again. Yeah. yeah. Um, Everyone stop watching it and just watch still the up dad and monetize video. though. Yeah. Still yes, making money. Just, okay. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I, I forgot that I can't get into my account right now. I got locked, mm. but yeah, oh, but that, I hope, I hope that dad, might be because the YouTube server that runs the mm -hmm. dad channel might've logged in and there might be taking over your channel. They do that a lot. I don't know. I, I just can't get in, over there. and it's still it's still monetized. But that's I've I tried to demonetize it. Oh, you me. can't get in to turn off the monetization. Yeah, thing. yeah, I can't oh, even get in and take it down. I I would have taken it down by now. Trust me. <laughs> but yeah, Dad's got to go easy on the nose because you know it's this is reconstructed. Well, so what this I've brand learned, new. This is a bit it might be hard to follow this, but um, to understand, Dad, the robot man from the YouTube server, the one that I'm fighting, the one you're fighting name. is. A clone, technically, they grew him based off of my image, and also he has all of my knowledge and information. And this other guy, Anden, who's from another planet, they pumped this robot with all the information that I've ever learned. So he has all of my training in him. So whatever I've learned, he learned. But now he's off learning his own things too. And he's like, "There's a video coming out. I because I can, I can log in and see all this. There's a video coming out of his training on Monday. I don't know when this Ooh. is going to go up. It'll probably be out by the time you guys put this episode out." And he's like, you'll see how he's been training. I don't know what he's doing, but I hear them down there. I'm in the facility now, too. I'm technically trapped in a VCR. This is wild. I don't, want, I don't, anyone, I don't expect anyone to understand this. If you watch the dad channel, it'll maybe make sense. But that being said. Nathan's life is insane. It is it's it's unlike wild. anything we've ever seen. <laughs> the, the, the situation I've put myself in. <laughs> so <laughs> convoluted. But if you watch my channel, dad knocked me out. I'm not fighting for anyone who's listening. Dad, uh, Matt is fighting dad bot. Anyway, dad bought, uh, if he's using what I've learned, might have gone easy on your face because something I've been doing in my training is I genuinely feel bad about punching the person. It's hard to make myself sometimes. I do aim for the forehead because I feel like it's all open with the headgear in the front. I and my coach goes, stop punching at the forehead. He goes, you have to hit the nose. And I'm like, well, we're sparring and I'm not going all out. I don't want to just break this guy's nose during a sparring. Like, well, I'm just trying to learn. And honestly, I like, I like more like getting hit to learn how to block and stuff. So when I do punch, I feel better punching in the forehead for some reason. And I, so I wonder if he has those instincts, maybe he won't aim he, for your I, nose. I, I honestly, I'm hoping so because, uh, you know, if, if my nose gets broken during this match, it's probably going to cost me 
five, six grand to, and it might not even look good anymore. You know, I might Owen Wilson myself. Uh, but I, I have a similar thing when I'm training, like when I'm sparring is like, I'll have a really good punch that i can land but for some reason i just stop short because it's like i, I feel too. bad you I, like i'll like, punch a little bit yeah it's like it's i, like I stop thing. before I actually like i could have landed it but i stopped because i almost feel bad exactly i do the same thing and it's i it's like i'm too sc- I'm, I'm like scared to punch my 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 coach and like every yeah. time i land a good shot and like sparring or something i'll immediately like step away and be like are you good are yeah, we yeah, good? yeah yeah i say sorry all the time i go yeah, oh, yeah, sorry yeah, yeah. sorry because i can tell i went hard on some of them mm-hmm. and i say sorry i'm like in there and they're not saying anything because i'm like i'm like i'm this uh, it's probably off all because we're not boxers and we're like comedians and gamers or whatever but like we have we're just a bunch of professional goofsters and we don't want to hurt anyone it's weird it's not in my nature to punch someone no it feels really weird yeah because i mean this is all new to me i mean i've punched ryan a few times you've punched me a few times of course so what friends do you guys ever get in a fight when you're younger like a real fight or anything i've never been in an actual fight i haven't gotten one Really? What, and like we're, we're straight up punching each other in the face. That was, oh, shit. I think it was 13 or 14. We're skateboarding Jeez. in Medway, Massachusetts on the <laughs> bike rack. We were grinding the bike rack. And my friend Tom was just standing on it and no one could go and like grind it. Fucking Tom. And he was just Tom Bodge. He wouldn't get off the bike rack. And we're like, Tom, get off. And I was so annoyed and I just, I just wanted to punch him. So I walked over to him and I just punched him. <laughs> And it was the weirdest thing. I've never done that before. I was just like, he did get on your nerves. He's kind of like an annoying guy. He later went on. He deserved it. To, yeah. He got in a few car accidents, I think. I maybe I shouldn't be talking about this guy's life, but he's kind of <laughs> a mess. Um, he's I said, uh, I said, been like, through a divorce, <laughs> you know. Lost a child. He's <laughs> sterile now, actually. Yeah, so we can't have another child after losing and one. it's all you know? from my fist. I ruined his life. Set him on a horrible path. He did. It was all from that. <laughs> but we got in a scrappy fight where I punched him, he punched me, and then I, I didn't like getting punched anymore. I just kept jump kicking him. I kept like jumping in the air and kicking him so he couldn't get at me. And I kept kick him in the stomach so he would like stay away from me and then he got me at one point and like gra- headlocked me and we like rolled off the curb rolling all around the pavement just like punching each other and it lasted maybe like a minute and a half Damn. and we got up off from the fight and instantly it was this weirdest thing where I felt so bad and he felt bad I could tell where I was like hey man sorry and he's like yeah I'm sorry too and, I, and he's like oh you punched me pretty good and I was like oh you got me really good too and we we're like best friends it was the weirdest craziest emotional roller coaster in two minutes I punched my cousin in the face once when I was like 12 and immediately I was like I'm sorry I'm sorry and well he started chasing me yeah because yeah, like, he didn't want to get and hurt. as I was running from him I was like I'm sorry I'm sorry <laughs> and when I ran I remember I hopped in my mom's lap and I started crying <laughs> Oh God! How old you are you? Punch someone in the face and then ran to your mom so you couldn't face the repercussions. Yes, yes. <laughs> there's so many stories about you as a kid. You were such a little shit. I wasn't a little shit. You were a little shit. He pants his sister, like at some like big event. I didn't. Oh. I did. Okay, I didn't pants her. How old I, were both I of you? I lifted up her skirt. Oh, sorry. Oh. That's any better. No, I can't believe I did that. No, when my was sister it? was presenting at a science fair in front of like a whole like Oh my God. And I thought it would be funny as a little kid to like, whoop. How old were you? I was like four or five. Oh, okay, okay. And, and, and like when I punched my cousin and started crying, I was like 10 or 11, I think. Okay. Uh, That's still pretty little. But he could he he could easily kick my ass back then. So I, yeah. it's because he was throwing, uh, remember those little, like, those like poppers, like the psst, like they don't even hurt you. Yeah, 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 yeah. But just the little like, like ones the, that come in like the, like the, the gunpowder yeah. cap gun thing. He wouldn't stop throwing those at me. <laughs> and and I was really scared of them. I was scared they were actually gonna hurt. And I was like, stop, stop. This is, and it, I just did like it was like an instinct. I didn't know what to do. And and I just turned around and I, de- I just, bah, right in the nose. And he was like, fucker. And I never heard him swear before, so it was really scary. Oh, and man. He, his nose bled like this. You know, and wow. I ran and I ran up. It was my so, cousin's house. Tell dad to get ready. I was yeah, say, tell dad to good. get ready. I'm sure dad bot is listening to this because he, he listens to everything on YouTube. They control the website. So they're probably hearing this. Transcribe instantly. it all in his brain. Mm-hmm. Because what he's learning right now is when you punch someone, you run away. And uh, you, what was the other thing? Well, this we was 15, this? 16 years ago. You cry. When Th- you this was early 2000s. So... You're just a long boy now, though. Yeah, You're I just was a boy that got long. Exactly. I was short. I was short then, you know, and uh, my cousin, you know, we were a, just like what you w- with Tom. We were rest of the night. We were cool with each other. And we hung out the rest of the night. And it was yeah, all yeah. Chill. It's like a bonding thing. It's just a, a caveman mentality about like, you know, you can be intense and then best friends. I think that closeness of the battle or whatever brings you close. 
Yeah, no, I'm just always oh, okay. checking. Okay. I'm just checking the audio to make sure everyone's being recorded. Oh, yeah. I, I, when I saw so the blank I stare off. Sometimes I saw and, just, and I was like keeping it going so that you wouldn't have like a gap to try to edit or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, don't worry. We cut it all up. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, fuck Tom and welcome to episode 291 of Super Mega Cast. Wow. Yeah, if you, if you haven't gotten the gist already, this is, this is our guest, Nathan Barnett. Mm, hi, hi, Wait, hi. You, you might know him. F- what? I've always said Barnett, but it's spelled with an A. Is it Barnett? It's Barnett. Oh, Barnett. Barnett. I've have, always said Nathan Barnett. You can say it like that. That's, that's fine. Like okay, most Nathan, people say. So uh, you don't have to accent the A as hard. Sometimes I overdo it, I think. And it's like, oh, it makes it too much of a thing. It's just Barnett. I say it's a, little, it's a softer A because it Very is an soft. A. Barnett. But the normal name is usually an E. But it's because when like whoever came over on the boat from Lithuania or whatever, it was, I think it was, it's not this, but it was similar to this. It was like Bear Natoshis was the name. <laughs> It was something, it was Lithuanian and, or Swedish or something. I think it was Lithuanian. And uh, the person who registered the, you know, my great grandfather or whatever, great, great, great grandfather or whoever, they just said Barnett, that's it. They just cut it down and made it to a new version, which is not the normal Barnett. So yeah, there you go. A- they, A-T-T. That. They'd just be like, yeah, you're, you know, this has been your family name for like centuries, but I can't say it. Say. So, that's so not let's it. just go ahead and just shorten it and make it a all. A lot of exactly. it is to avoid like racism or persecution. Like a lot of like the change, like what I feel like, I feel like the Irish McGee M C G E E. Yeah. They Americanize it and then just go M A G E E. Yeah. They, it's oh, like yeah. Mickey, Mickey. And now it's like yeah. Muggy. Well, it'd yeah. be capital M, lowercase C, capital G. Yep. They're like, let's just Muggy. I guess my family was like, no, we're, a, we're, um, <clears throat> We're American. Maggie? We're American. When we had that Irish guy narrate our- Jacksepticeye? No, not him. It was Jordan Peterson. When, <laughs> okay. when, when uh, that Irish guy narrated our uh, Area 51 video, he was like, Ryan Maggie. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I was- uh, Watson is from- uh, Well, I don't know what directly it's from because there's like several ones it could have been from. I've the, seen the list. Is it's that like, like a British thing? Because I think of- It's uh, Scottish. Uh, oh, okay. No, 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 no. UK at It's least, Scottish or, or British. Because I obviously think of Watson from- Sherlock Holmes. I'm like 99 because that's British. all I know about that word. And like my uh, 23 and me, I checked. I was like, oh, I can't wait to see what I am. And I thought I would like, like obviously I knew I was going to be like 99 percent European, but I thought that there would be like at least some more like diversity in there, like a little bit of like Slavic, maybe a little bit of yeah. German. Yeah. No, dude, it's like I'm like 95 percent just British. Wow. And like the smallest bit of like Irish, a little bit of Scottish, like almost no German, no French, no Slavic at all. Uh, wow. Like a little, little bit Ethiopian. Oh wow! And a little bit um, uh, Ashkenazi Jewish, just a little bit. Oh wow! But the Ethiopian. How was far back does that go? You think? Thousands of years, maybe. I don't okay. know. I mean, we've only been around for around like six thousand years. Well, yeah, that's when the Earth was created. Yep. But <clears throat> yeah, basically, uh, it came from either Mick Watson. That's a good one. Oh. McWaddison. McWaddison. That's, that's my favorite like one to think it came name. from. There's a couple different ones, though. Yeah. I mean, son of Walter. That's oh. like what Watson means. I watched it. Uh, I watched I, I like Irish names. I mean, it's really obsessed with them. The There's a girl I dated. Her name was Siobhan. I never, it was the first name I ever, I didn't know how to pronounce. It was, it's spelled Sio B. Han. And I was like, what the heck is this name? But that's like one of the more famous Irish names is Siobhan. But then there's a segment on Stephen Colbert with what's her name? Uh, Saoirse. Saoirse. I was just about to bring that up. Yeah, it spelled the, so weird. The Irish yeah. girl. She they did this whole segment where she's like, they're like, s- s- she would pronounce because like the audience and he didn't know how to say these words. It was like Xerox was like the spelling of some of them. And uh, she would say the real spelling. And it's like one of my favorite things is just looking at like Irish names because they're so crazy and they have more consonants. They look like Russian names almost. And yeah, the language and it, and it's Irish like is Ian. <laughs> yeah, the, Ian is like C's and X's and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> just throw all that extra. Oh, shit. Osh, like Osh Ian. Osh Ian was one of the names. It looks nothing like Osh Ian. I think I don't know. I can't remember. It's wild. Some of the Polish. They just throw a bunch of C's and X's and Z's, and it's like oh, yeah, yeah, Polish yeah. name. Yeah, Voski and all that stuff. Yeah. I think I'm Lithuanian and uh, I'm a little bit African. Uh, it's Guinea. I, I can think. see it. Yeah, <laughs> I, it's. Uh, I don't I don't know what to say. Because <laughs> if I say anything, it can't won't sound good. <laughs> Big guinea? Uh is it guinea? Is it you gu- call him a guinea? No, I didn't call him a guinea. No, Did you call no, him a guinea? No, 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 I didn't. Is it isn't guinea uh Is Guinea in Africa? No, Guinea's in like, I'm New, saying New the wrong Zealand. place. Like near, okay, New I'm guinea. saying the wrong place. My mom would kill me. She tells me this all the time. Where's old Guinea? From. What's that? Ghana? 
no, I don't know. Oh, well, here's the thing I should find out right now because my fifth grade and it's my dad's fourth grade grandfather was a famous fiddler from Africa who was buried in Cornwall, England. He married a British lady. He's from Africa. He was a slave or something. And then he like got famous as this fiddler. He was like one of the first famous musicians. And he's my great grandfather, great, 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 great grandfather. Wow. And he, he is why I'm part African. I can't remember his name. There's only like a drawing of him because it was some like 17 something or whatever. Is that where you got that beautiful head of hair from? Well, no. Uh, yeah. the, well, I was gonna say Someone, someone's people... got a little. Someone's got a little brand new. Uh, <laughs> little brand new little hair, you know. Because last time I saw you, didn't have a. You didn't have quite the. Quite the. No, no. There's a little bit. There's a little more dust up there now. Uh, uh... Transplant <laughs> seems like it's going well, huh? How is that? How is the transplant? Does it like hurt or? Um, oh, well, uh, it's, no, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt cause you're like numbed up, but, um, I only did it cause it's like for the characters and stuff. And oh, like, okay. I, I was cool being bald. Like that's like my thing that was like, uh, like no, I'm known for it. So like, yeah, I played a post on Instagram. I just don't want to talk about it too often. Oh, okay. it's like, I, I mean, I don't try to focus on it cause I didn't want to have like, I'm not trying to ever have like a big head, so full head of hair cause I can't because I'm fully bald and there's not enough to pull from. Yeah. But I did do it. Yeah. And, but it was because of the characters cause I can make it messier. I can do like a comb over now and it's easier than gluing hair in my head. So, um, I don't <laughs> I didn't know you're gonna bring that up. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's good. I oh, mean, bad, I don't man. normally we can, care. We can cut it out. Uh, whatever. That's all right. I don't. I, can, I just. If you, bad, want, if you want me to cut it, seriously. No, I it's okay. Well, okay. I, no, because I, I, I talked to Matt. You might. Want, I talked to Matt earlier. I said, just don't bring it up, because it's like awkward and uh, I'm a it's little a little goofball. weird. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah right, right. Right. I know. We Sorry. clown on we'll, each we'll, other. We will. We will. We'll cut it out. Yeah. You're not boxing. You don't have to be mean to me anymore. You're boxing dad, not me. Your dad bot. Well, you guys have the same head of hair, so. Yeah, well, it's true. He is cloned basically after me, but uh, now, uh, now I have this great. Uh, yeah, well, sorry. Anyways, I, well, just, just I mean, we can again. talk about all the, the the drugs you're doing too. Your mom actually commented on that. Did your mom see the things you guys put on YouTube? Uh, yeah, uh, she does, but don't. She doesn't listen to the podcast. Don't bring up the drug stuff. Okay, she doesn't okay. know. The, she thinks the well, maybe Dad will mention something well, in another crack, diss track. No. Please don't. That's what she, she commented, commented on the last one. I know. He, so I know that. Yeah, she and he it. didn't mention anything about that. So, but uh, you well, know. you said my drug addicted chest. <laughs> yeah, but like that could mean anything. Like, yeah, but she, you know, she gets she worries about me, so I don't yeah, want to like worry her. All right, all right, the all right, crack, all right. The crack. I was just trying to. I'm just. just that's, I'm just that's separate around. from. Yeah, that's fine. Sorry, sorry. Are we, just, are we good? We can just cut all this out. Right yeah. Sorry. I didn't mean to make it no, awkward. No, no, I no, no, no I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bring up the hair trend. I was just a little annoyed that you said that. No, I, I, so I was trying to, I was, I didn't want to be, I'm not trying to be mean, but I just wanted to. I'm just know. two wrongs out. don't make a right. You know, I know, so I know. I'm trying to figure out where to just cut back in here. Come back. We're talking about nationalities and stuff before. We were talking about national. Okay. Yeah. Where are you, Ryan? What are you, what is your ancestry? Uh, From what I know, I am Palestinian, Irish. Dutch, Indonesian. You got a fucking. And that's all I know. I haven't taken a test. That's just all from. You should what do a twenty three and me. Grandparents. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Stuff. I was. I was supposed to do the twenty three and me too. My whole family's done it except for me. And my mom was like, "Oh, you will might be a bunch different than your brothers. Like I might have more African in me than he, my brother Josh does, which is kind of wild. I thought it would be sort of. Yeah. Even, I thought that too. I thought that like my sister and I would have the same percentages, but we don't. It's yeah. Different. Because my you grand get more of whatever, yeah. yeah. My grandparents on my dad's side are just both whiteies, yeah, both straight up whiteies. <sighs> my dad's a whitey. Where Where are you from? What state? Uh, South Carolina. South Carolina. We're both and, from South Carolina. Oh, you both? Are, did you guys know each other before? No, we didn't know each other in South Carolina. <laughs> That's crazy. We met you each met other out here. here? Uh huh. Really? Yeah. No. People That's think wild. We've known each other our whole lives. We only met in 2015. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You do seem like you were best high school best friends kind of thing. I know. I know. We've only we only met in 2015. Like wow. Was like that May. on the Markiplier stuff on editing? Now. Yep. We it, did. Mar Mar Mark. Well, Mark's not the that's reason crazy to you. It's that we it's, met. It's kismet. Mark's the reason I came out here and then ended up with Ryan. And but we did, met but because our friend Daniel was really b better friends with you. Yeah. And I didn't mm -hmm. talk to you at all because you would send me annoying shit on Facebook and I didn't know him. He'd like send me like porn ads with my grandmother in them and stuff. Oh my God. And yeah. I'm just it, like, and I'm like, I don't know you. Well, it'd, be <laughs> like a, it'd be like a porn ad where it's like, like. My grandmother sucked me off. And I just grabbed like a picture of Ryan with his grandma from like his Facebook and I'd send it to him because I thought I'd be like, oh, he'll think this is funny. <laughs> it's and like, it's talk like, to me. And I'm not like, if <laughs> Daniel said that friends. to me, I'd laugh. 
But it was just because like I didn't know you. I'm like, what is Wait, this? See, because I knew Daniel. I thought that like if I I knew if I sent it to Daniel, he'd laugh. So I'm like, oh, I bet Ryan's the same. <laughs> So I, uh, you were right. Matt's a little, he's a naughty boy. He I'm, a bit, I'm a bit of a naughty boy. Yeah. I'm a bit of a goofball sometimes. But yeah, we met uh, through our friend Daniel because I was making YouTube videos uh, in my freshman year of college and they were making YouTube videos on their channel, Send to Go. Like, yeah, you were kids with problems. Mm -hmm. They were yeah. Send to Go. And yeah. then we were like, let's make a video together. So then I flew out to LA in May 2015. And then that's when we made Blonde Boys. We filmed the, our most legendary video. Legend. Would, wait for wait it. For what it? channel? Wait, wait for it. Dairy. Dairy. Oh, I was like, well, how long Syndigo. is this going What channel was it on? Syndigo. Syndigo was mm -hmm. the channel. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure because I, I had never find a channel of yours. I have just you on YouTube. Do mm -hmm. you not have a solo channel? Uh, I used to post stuff. Like I back in 2014, I think it was. 2014 and the beginning of 2015, I would post movie reviews. Are you forgetting about the 200 subscribers? Thank you, special and, and the 200 <laughs> subscribers. Thank you. <laughs> I made a machinima. Do you know what that is? Where you yeah, yeah. They, like I was. I almost blue. signed. Do you still have that? A long time ago, huh? I would love to see that video again, dude. That I that, think, I that think would take me back. I think I made it public just because people were always like, "That's so funny." That's Hold like on. that Mr. Beast video where he says, "Like, you know, I want to have like 100 subscribers and then really pop, be really popular." And now he's like the number one. You ever what? see that? He, no, I've never seen. It's that. one of his first videos oh. on his channel. He He's like 15 talking about how he wants to have like a thousand subscribers it's and seven he hopes years to do ago. this for his job. It's and that's awesome. Been, it's, yeah, it's wild. Yes, dude. <laughs> this. Is that a gameplay or is that from Red vs. Blue? This is, this is, because you can go he made in feeder himself. mode. Oh, you can. Yeah, oh, I didn't so know that. So I just that. made this. This is awesome, dude. This is bringing back so many memories. Y'all are so amazing. I, I, so it's not even you in it. It's just like the game and then you say thanks. I, I go into the game as the avatar and do what I need to do. And then I yeah. go into theater mode and get the shots that I want. Yeah. From Was that Babus font? Uh, I think so. Like Babus New maybe? We used to all, you mean Daniel always used that It was font. so clean. It was when we watched the documentary and like gushed over the Helvetica font a lot. Helvetica? Too. I was just going to say. It's still clean. Second, My favorite font Second ever. favorite font. Still great. I found a better one. Mm. When I. Was, you don't want to give it away? I'll give it away. Oh, shit. Uh, the dad channel uses it because they ripped me off and took everything. This is a long story. People aren't going to understand it. But yes, I did the dad character on my Nathan channel in 2017. And then it was a rip. It got ripped off by this woman, Cheryl, who created the robot. Long story. But they use the same font. And it's uh, something source. Pro. Maybe it's just source pro. Something source pro. Something source okay. pro. If you search so source. Is it on Google fonts? Up. I have that font. Probably. I use it in a premiere. That's where I discovered it was in premiere. It's very it's a great thin. Font. There's a there's a light one where it's really, really thin. Really light, yeah. And then there is like normal. There's like thick. 15 of them in the Yeah, family. there's a bunch of them. That is so clean to me. It's off of a I Google love it. fonts. It's a yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good one. Google Fonts has really clean fonts. I, I, I love. I like good, simple. Me too. I love, I love Helvetica. Good Wes Anderson. I got into Helvetica because of like Wes Anderson movies because I'm pretty sure he uses Helvetica. It's Jackass for me. Oh, Jackass uses Helvetica. Yeah, the Jackass logo. Just Helvetica is like the, the, all great, the lowercase. You don't need another Helvetica. font. The yeah, Helvetica and Comic Sans are the only two fonts that need to be done. Absolutely, papyrus. You know. Oh, here's a cool Sans story. Screen. Comic, the guy who created Comics Sans is from my town of Milford, Massachusetts. Really? Which is the title of a short it's film on short my film. channel. Yeah, I watched that I the other know, night. Matt, thank you very much. Thank you. Milford, I and that guy are the two most famous people from Milford. What? In Milford, Massachusetts. Damn, yeah. okay. So I the think, man who made I Comic think Sans. he died last year or this year, I think. So now, oh. like, so now you now are I, the most I'm, famous, I'm person, the most from famous person from Milford. Milford, Massachusetts. Was he yes. not included in the Oscars, like in, in memorium? <laughs> it's a shame. Probably because he died. <laughs> It's also because it's the most hated font in the world. <laughs> oh, but it's so it's it's love, but is more hated. hated than uh -huh. Comic Sans. Really? I always thought Comic oh, Sans was like the one. My was... least favorite font ever is that one font. It's it was like built into Windows. Forgot what it's called, but Wing it's like dings? no the I, letters I are all goofy. Dings too. Yeah, it's like a real goofy one, but like the letters have like. You know I know what you're talking about. You know what I'm about. talking about? I don't know the it's name the of it, It's the ugliest font I've ever seen. And it was on every computer back in the day. Does it have like balls at the yes. end of each one? Like almost like a joint? Like a, like an elbow type of, but it's rounded. It had like, or the, like the spikes of and the it was end. all, let me see if I can find it because it's disgusting. Dude. Skia? I'm mom, imagining I want, like, mom, I want Babus for, for Christmas, but we already have Babus at home. The impact. <laughs> Fuck it, dude. I love fonts. I, I, is fonts, that what it's called? Fonts are awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I tried to make, I was like, a couple years ago, I was like, I'm going to make like the ultimate like font like collection for myself that I'm going to have on a hard drive that I put on all my computers. And I had like one day where I downloaded like, 
I like handpicked like a thousand five hundred fonts, and I was like, "This is awesome." <laughs> And then I don't know what happened to it. I just lost it. Oh, gosh. Your font so, drive is gone. So and now it's like every computer I work on, because I work on three or four different computers um, between like my house and our Super Megaplex and stuff. And they all have different fonts on them. And it's mm. just like, I wish that like fonts could just. I wish they were universal or I wish, they, I wish every yeah. computer had every font. What, Let me find this one. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's called. When I'm on my phone, if I'm making like a thumbnail or something on my phone and I can't get that source one. I always use Helvetica, and I don't think anyone ever notices the difference. So it's always it's the safety one. That's what yeah. I, is is the other font like just a little shorter? It's just like I think it's rounder in the joints and like the curves okay. and stuff. I don't really know the difference. It's like a simpler, more futuristic sort of Helvetica. Mm -hmm. It's cleaner. It's like modern sci-fi. Futura. Sci That's how I think of it. As Futura is the font. Uh, Futura is a good one too. The Supreme logo is Futura. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Futura is good. I it's like that one. Classic Garamond. Maybe that's the Wes Anderson one. No, I think it's Helvetica. I'm trying to find a... This, I love big titles over like wide shots. It's yeah, like yeah, yeah. Thing. I love a, I love the airplane title in the movie Airplane. It's oh, like, yeah, yeah, real yeah. Real big. It's like the old like blocky letters. Yeah. I love a good sans serif font without the, without the feet. They're called feet, right? Like the... Yeah, I guess so. Oh, and it doesn't have like the L, you mean? The bottom of the L? Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah, like, like, you know, like... Uh, or when it kicks up, when it doesn't have the little or when, Yeah, when it doesn't have, like, the little feet. So, you know, it's like some fonts, like the S will have, like, you know, like the the little bars at the end of each Oh, letter. yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, yes. That's yeah, because that's what makes it look old-timey. Without, right? I like without. I like, I I like, like without, without a lot. Too. That, otherwise, it looks like typewriter or, like, cowboy yes. font or something. Yes, yeah, sans. Yeah, sans serif. Sans serif? Sans? Yeah, I guess we would say <laughs> sans because comic sans. But See, technically, I like the comic word sans is more sans. than papyrus. Oh, I hate papyrus. papyrus I can't is the worst. Papyrus. It's the Avatar it's logo. The fucking I'm gonna, I'm worst. Gonna, papyrus laundry. is. I see it in so many goddamn businesses in South Carolina that yep. like it, it'll it'll be like a, a Greek restaurant or something like a hookah where, lounge? where it's trying to. Yeah, it'll be like we're. Oh yeah, that's hideous. <laughs> that's <laughs> right? yeah. It's always at like a. It's always a menu font. Yeah. Yes. At a Greek at, restaurant. A, a basic <laughs> restaurant. Yeah. At, uh, an Indian restaurant. Yep. Nineteen eighty two. It was created. Really. Papyrus is a widely available typeface designed by Chris Costello, a graphic designer, illustrator, and web designer created in 1982. It was hand-drawn over a period of six months by means of calligraphy, pen, and texture paper. Six months? Category is fantasy. I can see that. It's like elf font. Like, as as a kid, oh, yeah, that, that's the font you'd be like, oh, shit, and I'm going to make this look yeah, interesting yeah. on a PowerPoint. I'm going to make this yeah, look eroded. Especially in the 90s or something. It's like oh. cutting edge. I was on the cusp end of floppy disks so in elementary school yep. i was using floppy disks and then i feel like around middle school time i started using more like usb cd stuff. yeah yeah what middle, year did you graduate 2012 and i was 2014. oh my god I'd like, high school not that's i never graduated me. my biggest year i would say the best year of my life was 2012 I'll really? tell you why. And now it's all been downhill from here. Although this boxing thing is really changing things for me and turning things around. Because I'm I'm literally milking and sucking all your followers. It's hey, pretty, man. pretty great. Milk and suck away. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I, suck I away, will brother. suck all of your followers if they come over. To, well, I mean, I will just. You'll suck all I will take them over to me. I found the font I was talking about. What is that? Yeah, Joker that's, Man. Yes. Joker? Joker Man. Joker so, Man. Do you remember <laughs> this font? I do. It's the worst font. <laughs> that looks like Joker Dr. Man. Seuss font almost, it's, right? It's, I can't tell from here. I have bad eyesight. You that? Oh, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, the worst that's font. that's horrible. Can't stand it's it. Just, when there's shapes and stuff in a font, that's kind of 90s, I'm guessing, right? Yeah. yeah. It looks like. That's like old school of, Windows font. Yeah, yeah. But I remember floppy disks. Uh, well, I remember like cause my dad was an architect uh, and he would do all of his stuff on like a really old Mac. We'd have to turn in projects on yeah. that shit. Yes. I remember having to turn like shit in on floppy disks. Mm -hmm. my, uh, my whole, I graduated in 1999. My whole, really? yeah. <laughs> I got even so much so older like than in, you guys. So like in college, you were still using floppy disks. I didn't even go to college. I went for one year. I, I went for, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Could I'll tell us. Hey, no, actually, I, at least I went cool. for two years, buddy. At least I'll, I went for one. So, hey. Well, ow, ow. Sorry, dude. I didn't go to, I went to, I went to UMass Boston for one semester. I was a theater major. I got in a play. I was the lead of the play. It was called Cinderella Waltz, which was a spoof on Cinderella. You played like a, Cinderella? I played the village idiot, actually. Okay. Z Zed was yeah, his name. <laughs> I did. And, and I, I didn't think I was going to get it. I was, I was so timid and I was so shy kind of at the, try, the audition or whatever. 
Um, otherwise, you'd be like a stagehand or you'd be whatever if you didn't get a part. So I auditioned. I got the lead. And it was I was the village idiot that Cinderella falls in love with. And I get smarter throughout the play until I become very well spoken. And I teach her this lesson. And it was like a really cool part because I changed so much throughout. I had to play like a uh, caveman. And then I became <laughs> like the the ravaging hunk. Is Would you say ravaging? Yeah, ravaging. Yeah. Ravaging hunk, I guess. Anyways, Dashing. it was a cool. And then I dropped out because I didn't. the next semester I didn't want to do any of their stuff. I didn't want to like do other parts like carrying sandbags around or whatever. So I dropped out. Well, once you play the hunk, it's like, I was like, I, you, my career there's is nowhere set to go, now. but down, mm -hmm, you know, exactly. So I was also auditioning in Boston for commercials. This was 2000 and like one or something, 2000, 2001. I was auditioning for commercials and I was booking tons of commercials in Boston. And I was like, why am I in school for acting when I'm being paid to act now? And I was making videos and putting them on DVDs. We had a, a DVD called life on fruit street. My, mom and dad lived on fruit street in milford massachusetts and we made sketches and stuff so i was doing all that stuff and i was like why am i in college i'm just gonna drop out of this this is like spending money for nothing and then a year after i moved to california which then leads me to 2012 10 years later where it was the best year of my life when you guys were graduating i was on the cover of la weekly i had what? my own shoe a nathan barnett shoe i was a skittles spokesperson i remember the skittles commercial i was i met the love of my life i it was literally i had i bought a new car i bought an audi <laughs> only new car i ever Damn. owned was that was that from the skittles money it was it was from the skittles money i just i wanted to have a nice car i never had a good car you still get I, skittles for life I, I could, but I don't really bother hitting them up anymore because the people who I was working with are already kind of gone. Wait, like they give you team. free Skittles? They, sh they sent me a pallet one time, a pallet of boxes filled, raw cardboard boxes just filled with Skittles. Not even the packets with like the bag. <laughs> just a cardboard box. Loose Skittles. Imagine carrying that in the bottom drop down. <laughs> I gave. Not, like walking like, like into a bank with it in the bottom just caves. It, oh, it shit. It was it was crazy. I had this pallet sitting in our driveway. We put it in there. I had an arcade. I had an arcade at the time. My oh, garage was turned into like it. 15 arcade cabinets. It was a year of my life. I had a party in Santa Monica at my apartment. Eric Andre was there. The workaholics guys were there. I'm pals with Martin Starr. He was there. And at the time, I didn't think much of it because I was like, oh, these are people I know. And I, they, the workaholics just got their show. So it was like kind of a thing. And Eric Andre wasn't Eric Andre all the way yeah, just yeah, yet. Yeah. But then these people came from Whole Foods that my friend worked at. And they were like flipping out about all these people. And I was like, oh, that's when I realized like, oh, this is my life's pretty cool right now. And we're all young. I was jumping off the roof of my apartment onto this bouncy house. This is all 2012 when you guys are graduating. I was living the height of my life. Dude. After that, all came crashing down. <laughs> I I don't Similar I don't hang story. out with Eric anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Audi is gone. I'm driving a dented minivan. Uh, don't have a girlfriend. Don't have Skittles. No deal. Skittles. No Skittles. That's the worst part. So, yeah. And those Skittles boxes I got, I'd give them up to people for presents because I, like, I don't know how to do these. So I'd, I'd give them people and then they would take them. I heard one guy said he wrapped it and gave it to uh, as a wedding gift and he handed it to them and it ripped out of their fingers. Like, like I didn't know it was going to be so heavy and it fell to the ground and it didn't bust open. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I, that's, they, a good white, really that's a good well. like, uh, white elephant. Like keep passing on. Like it's just a fucking mat. You, it, they you, seem heavy. The, you're taking handfuls of Skittles for like months out of these boxes. I so like anyways, Skittles, but that would just fucking kill me. I had a Skittles vending machine. They sent me a custom vending. Only Kim Kardashian, the Jonas Brothers and myself got these. It was, it, was it in a video? It's in a video. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I saw that because I remember. Uh, I'm only bringing this up because when you said earlier, I'm not trying to brag or anything. It was obviously cool, but like nothing else as cool happened to me ever. My life has been crappy afterwards. But because you guys graduated that year when I was like feeling like my success of my life. And now it's all. <laughs> and now you're on the super mega cast. <laughs> this, no, but no joke. This is like everything I've been doing with you is and interacting with you guys on like Twitter and stuff. Like when I was saying like I'm taking all your followers. My followers and my subscribers have been going up so much because of the whole boxing match against like Matt and just being involved with you guys. Like you are literally changing my life. Well, because I've been on this website since 2005 and everyone forgot about me. <laughs> I'm, an, well, I'm the old man. I'm the oldest one in the boxing event. Well, dad bot is. Y here's the thing. They might have forgotten about you, but they're not going to forget about these ad reads coming up. I was about to. I thought you were about to say something. I was going to interrupt you with these ad reads. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's good. I'm actually going to take a pee. Listen, if you're a fellow like me, you know, you might not put too much thought into your skin, but you want to. But it's just too much effort, too much time. There's so many choices. You don't know what's good for your skin. You don't know what to do. Guess what? Throw those thoughts out the window because Curology is here to make skincare easy 
breezy, beautiful. Curology is actually made for your skin. It's the way to go. You'll get a custom prescription cream made for you by a dermatology provider for your specific goals, whether that's tackling acne, clogged pores, skin texture, dark spots, fine lines, or something else. You start- <laughs> Sorry. No, it's cool. You start by taking a short online skin quiz, and if it's a good fit, they'll ship you your formula right to your door. I'm trying to work on, you know, smoother skin and, and moisturized skin. So I got this skin moisturizer from Curology that I put on every morning and it feels amazing. And my skin, if you've noticed in recent videos, juicy, soft. Mwah. You do be looking fine, boy. Thank you. So get started today with Curology, just like I did with a free 30 day trial at Curology.com slash super. Just pay $5 for shipping and handling. That's C-U-R-O-L-O-G-Y.com slash super to start your free 30 day trial. Cancel anytime. Prescription subject to consultation. Huge tech companies in America pay next to nothing in taxes, meaning they barely give anything back to the society that made them rich. They may not do a lot of giving, but they sure do a lot of taking. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about how these tech companies enrich themselves by taking your personal data. They grab your web history, email metadata, and video searches to create a detailed profile on you and then sell all of it to the highest bidder. Companies aren't just selling products anymore, they're selling you you have become the product. To protect your identity and data from these tech giants, I recommend using ExpressVPN every time you go online. Think about all the websites you visit. Facebook, Twitter, Google, Christian Mingle. Everything you do and say online is tracked by these big, big, big giant corporations. Using your public IP address, they can uniquely match your activity and know your location. ExpressVPN makes you anonymous online by camouflaging your IP address and replacing it with a different secure IP of your choice. ExpressVPN also encrypts all of your data so that it's protected from hackers and anyone else that's trying to spy on you. And what I like most about ExpressVPN is how easy it is to use. Just download the app on your phone or computer, tap one button, and you're protected. You know, I, I, I use ExpressVPN, we use ExpressVPN here at the office, we feel safe, it's, it's, it, it, it makes for a, a nice, soothing, and relaxing experience knowing that these big, disgusting corporate entities can't spy on us. <laughs> right, Matt? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm down, down with the man. So if you're like me and Matthew and believe your internet data belongs to you and not to greedy corporations, then ExpressVPN is the answer. Visit expressvpn.com slash supermega to get three months free on one year package. That's expressvpn.com slash supermega. Expressvpn.com slash supermega. That's where you should go to uh, learn more. Dude, my favorite, my absolute favorite type of humor is uh, just... awkward, dry humor, mm -hmm. which, like... which didn't really like, come around until like i feel like like almost like 2012 2013 yeah like, yeah like, that's when you start figuring out it was your more thing. like slapstick before that i think well i yeah, mean yeah. you would know better because you're a comedian that was more sentient during the time i like physical and slapstick stuff and that's like always gets a good laugh because like it's easier but i do love like andy kaufman and like borat and sasha baron cohen like, awkward like nathan public. fielder one of my that's favorite the, comedians that's the, that's the best he, like he's probably my biggest Nathan Fielder and Eric Andre are two of my biggest inspirations for comedy just because Nathan Fielder, the way he, uh, he is never awkward, cracks. he never cracks in the way, the way, the, like, the also, way he, he creates is, these he awkward is situations. sort of autistic. I, I've interacted with him a bunch. He, he's, we had the same agent for a long time. Oh, really? Never, every time I called, he wouldn't, the agent was like, what, Nathan? And I was like, who's this other Nathan? And I Googled him and I was like, who, he was nobody. He had like some YouTube videos, yeah, like, funnier dive uh, videos. Canada, Canada he did yeah. The, that, but then he got his show and it went, blew up. I watched the, uh, the pilot when it aired um and i was like i love this it's so, i like it's so changed funny. my fucking i've seen every episode of that show so many times it's hilarious it's it's amazing it's it's it, but he is he i don't know if it's done now it probably is because he's he was saying i don't know what else to do he's like i think we did it enough yeah like, well i know he's people. working on that new uh, i think hbo series with the safety brothers oh that's cool oh yeah he he became friends with like big people people yeah, love him yeah he got, which he got is great big. for him. And then probably for me, like the biggest inspiration for like my editing style and Ryan's and stuff is like not the Eric Andre show, but uh, check it out with Steve Brule. So good. Like or that. Tim and Eric shit. Too. Yeah. I mean, Steve all, Brule, I think, is next level funnier yes. than Tim and Eric. Yeah. I, I think it's Steve Brule is top tier for me. He is such a good actor. And it's a lot of it is him. And I know they're directing behind the scenes and kind of saying stuff, but like it's mostly him. I love Tim and Eric. Doug Pound, I'm pals with him. He is the reason Tim and Eric is what it is. I, in my yeah. opinion, he's the editor. Okay. He's the one that started oh, the whole really? awkward, weird editing and the zooms and the tight shots and the 
DJ Doug Pound is, yeah, yeah. he's the reason, in my opinion, why Tim and Eric is visually what it is. Steve Brule. Just but Steve like, Brule. I think, I think Steve Brule tops Eric Andre's show and Tim and Eric for I, me. I've, just because of like how uh, stylized it is mm-hmm. and how it just, John C. Riley is incredible as that he's character. He's so funny. He's so funny. I, I love that kind of, com- I, one of my, my, like we were talking about Skittles earlier, that's like one of my favorite characters is Trail of Wows. That was before Steve Brule even started doing his thing and I always got the comparison because visually we looked similar with like the wildness of us and then the talking, I love broken, busted sentences, like <laughs> saying the wrong word, but you understand what they mean and the guy's like struggling to get through it and you're like, this guy's just it's like a crazy personality. I love that kind of comedy of a lunatic. Like when Steve Rule is like, trying to run a show. Name. Yeah. It's like, this is, you know, this is Jimmy, Jimmy Brungan. Everyone's, <laughs> everyone's someone Brungan. Yeah, it's and like bro- Brungus, Brungus. Brungus instead of Boats. It's always a R. He throws an Dang, R in dirty everywhere. Church. It's a Broats. Broats. It, that's, I've, I, I've cried laughing at like a handful of things and Steve Rule is no number one. Oh my God. I have to pause it. I do too. So hard. When I was in high school, I showed all my friends that show. When he goes to Ron Don Volante's playpen, home so of the $5 funny. lap dance. Excellent I've been wanting show. to do, because I, I want to take my characters out of what I do have done with them and put them in a setting like, like the trail character, the Skittles guy. I want to put him in a setting sort of like, what's it, uh, like Steve Brule, because I feel like I could thrive more and like make comedy like, like stands up more like that. Otherwise it's just me standing in front of an alley with a tripod and it's like, so limited. I just want to like have an interview, a guest. And if I'm in character, I did it once with my peg leg character, Ray Amsley. And like people thought I really had a wooden peg leg and it was so fun. And like, it was the most thrilling acting I think I'd ever done because they had no idea I was in character and they were like asking me about the peg leg, but trying to be like nice about it. And I was just like going crazy and yelling things. I got people off Craigslist and that so the Steve Brule and that whole like pranking someone, but not telling them. It's like my favorite. That's why I love Nathan for you and Steve Rule and oh, stuff. Yeah. It's like Nathan for you is genius. Yeah. Really? It's so good. Just, honestly, yeah. It's like pranking people. It, I guess it is a form of like pranking. But, but the it's prank is a prank, pranking. but it's more on you're making yourself look stupid. That's what I always like to do. When I do you're, my, you're my, my live public stuff, yeah. I try to look like a crazy person in the streets and see how other people interact with me and avoid me. That's the comedy. I don't want to like annoy people too much or like yeah, make them like look get dumb. in their face. Yeah. And I'm not like making them look stupid. It's like, oh, this making them look sane for running away from me right but it's that's what you want to see is the reaction you're creating like an atmosphere of just like awkwardness and that's what's funny i mean like borat and bruno do that too but they they that pushes more so he pushes where he's invasive he pushes he pushes where uh he is making fun of the people because he gets them to say these yeah off well they're i mean they kind of are making fun of themselves because they're the ones saying he he pushes them just the right way to to say just like exactly he gets them to say the worst shit I, uh, my friend Paul, I was talking to you guys earlier before we were recording. My friend Paul, who is from Massachusetts, we, he came out here a couple years after me. It was me, my brother Seth, and Paul like work together on like all our stuff. Like all our big shows and the pilots and stuff we do are with like, a lot of the big commercials are Paul will direct them and like write stuff with me, my brother and I. Paul worked, recently worked with Sasha Baron Cohen on an adult swim commercial. Oh. And he said, it's like, you can't say anything to him. He's just, guys just doing things. And he's like giving signals and stuff to like the producer to get things to happen. To like get, it's like, he's like, it's like you could study the guy all day and like break down every moment of like what he's doing, where he's turning the right way to get the person to turn, to get the person in the background to see something because it's going to be awkward or funnier when he's about to say the thing he's about to say. And he's just like manipulating the whole situation to get what he needs because he knows really, what he needs. He's really uh, like crazy kind anal of anal about his yeah about oh yeah yeah his, and it was like an adult swim commercial that no one's gonna see it airs for a week and he was like so all over it and like he called my friend paul he, go, he goes um mr director because <laughs> he didn't remember his name mr. So he called director. Him mr director and paul's like oh that was the, at least I, he acknowledged me as the director even though it said I did mr nothing. that was vi- that you know and he's, uh, he's or being sir director would have been nice too yeah it would have been nice i love the video of him as borat breaking character because he's upset about like the people making noise mm-hmm. he's like just stops and he's like can we can can they be quiet please that what is that when did that it's just a video like from set where like uh a scene clip from borat too where he's like walking with like the town behind him and there's like some people off to the side because they Mm. film it and i think they film it also it was like a film one of the moments where it was like more of a scripted thing yeah it was it was a scripted one yeah uh and uh people being quiet and like stops and like goes back and like his british accent he's like why are they talking yeah, Can they yeah, be quiet? yeah. It's, you always forget he's British. He's so like regal sounding when you hear him yeah, speak. He and then he like looks like a lunatic and he's doing the most vile things when he's in character. They filmed it in Ka- Kazakhstan. I mean, I, they filmed those parts in Kazakhstan. Did they actually Turkey. go to Kazakhstan? I thought they went somewhere else and made it look like Kazakhstan. Might have been Turkey. Which Turkey? 
Nathan is known for its hair transplant. Have you thought about? Have you ever thought about going what? to Turkey for a hair transplant? It is because it's cheaper. Oh, I didn't know about that. What? <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh God, uh, I did actually hear that. I, if if, that, if you do want to talk about, no, no, it, I, I, if, I, if you're I thinking about it or something, it I'm sorry. Oh yeah, are you thinking about it, Matt? Is that why you brought it up? No. No, yeah, I don't you, need it. are you losing your hair at all? How old no, are you no, no. I, just, I, uh, I was just, it just made the connection because I keep oh, looking God. at your hair transplant. Uh, while we're this. It looks good. It looks great. I mean, I think it looks natural. It's, yeah, it, it is. It is what I looked like at uh, ten years ago. It's the same hairline that I had when my hair was going. I, I said to the guy, I said, I don't expect to have a full head of hair. If we're talking about, you're making me talk about this all the time. Uh, I didn't want to have a full head of hair because I can't because I don't have enough to pull from. And I thought, well, if I'm going to have it for the characters and mess it up for stuff, give me the Bruce Willis from 90s. Just give me a receded hairline. And that's what he did. But apparently, yes, you can go to Turkey and get a hair transplant. Sorry. If you want to keep bringing it up. I didn't. For some reason. I legitimately forgot. It's hard. Oh all right. I'll make a joke. It's kind of hard not to bring it up. Oh, I'll say gosh. that. Well, it's also kind of hard not to bring up like the legitimate crack cocaine that was on the coffee table when I first walked into this place. What the heck is that? Just call it crack. We don't we don't need to say the cocaine. I part. mean, I don't do crack. drugs, so I, don't, I thought it was just called crack, crack cocaine. Well, is that, my mom so that is real. This, it's there is no it's prop crack cocaine. There's no yeah. I don't No, man. There's actually. ashes. It was burnt. The something was smoked. It's like it looks like you were using it on the coffee table. Is this your this is your place, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's obvious. I think, I think something's the, going on here. Well, I think that like the hair transplant thing is like something everyone can see, but like the, the drug. Yeah, but I don't talk about it. Like I posted scenes. on Instagram a yeah, long time ago and I let it get buried. Scenes. That's not something Dude, like everyone that's knows you do drugs. But if you're going to bring it up, bring it up like ironically, you don't have to like legitimately mention the stuff in the office. I mean, I'm got back into the corner. I, I, like, I, I'm I didn't defending me- myself. I mean, at the end of the day, this is our podcast. I didn't mention the transplant. So like but I don't know why crack brings him into yeah, it. Yeah, that that's yeah. And my mom, well, my I mean, mom, right, I don't want to worry right, my mom, and he doesn't want to worry his mom because he didn't. I'm not mad at you. I'm just like yeah, I don't see I don't, the well, necessity. Like, I don't see why it's straight up just making fun of me and backing me into a corner. No, like, it was a joke. I'm staring. I can see it right out the door right now. Like what? I, my eyes looked and I saw. Like what do you want me to say? Oh, sorry. Next time you come over, I'll make sure I put all the crack away in the cupboard. I mean, maybe it's not crack. I don't know. I don't even smoke weed, but like maybe it's. But it doesn't look like what I've seen from marijuana. No, it's it's not. It is it is crack. You got that right, but. Why yeah. do you have that? You can't be doing that. Don't put this in. Cut I'm this not. Out right. Yeah, of course. You, why would you? Ha- what, for real though, you don't do that, do you? Where do we? Where do we leave off? I don't know. Of uh, course, I smoke crack. Uh, Sasha Baron Cohen. Sasha Baron Cohen. I mean, okay. I, I'm like, training for I feel like shaky now. I feel. I feel like. I'm, Can you tell? I, I actually feel look at that. awkward. Look at, look at right those. Now. Are you scared of those? <laughs> not at all. I do feel weird, man. I can't keep talking. It's, I feel like I need to take a break or something because I feel like. Almost like, you know that feeling you get when you like almost get in a fight? Yeah. And I, I have that and I don't want to because like, I'm sorry. It's weird. Okay, I'm I, didn't sorry. Mean to be, I didn't mean to make it awkward. Let's I know, I know. I, I, I'm not trying let's to move like, on. I'm trying to like relax. Let's, let's all take a deep breath. This is, it's actually awkward. Yeah, let's <laughs> take a deep we breath. We have water if you need it. Do we want to no, take I'm another right, break? I'm all right. It's not, the, not, yeah. not enough time for that. I just know. can't like, my brain can't get back to like goofing around right now because that's like, you're kind of being an a hole, man. We can just talk about, you can just, if, if we don't want to joke around, we'll, we'll probably like build back into that. But if you just wanted to go over like what you've been doing personally about training. Um, uh, yeah. I, all right. Yeah. Sorry, dude. <sighs> I'm sorry. We'll, it's okay. Let's okay. Move, let's take a deep breath. Three, two, one. <laughs> Speaking of Sasha Baron Cohen. He's in shape. Yeah. He well, is. You, is he? You're in shape too. He, he is. He's like muscular. Have you seen the, I, I followed his wife because I had a crush on her after Hot Follow her home? I wish y'all have a I similar would. build, huh? Uh, he's really tall. He's like Matt's height, maybe. I think he might be six. Yeah, but in terms of muscle mass, he's 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 muscular. I saw and I you saw that because of her post. Whatever her name is, the actress uh, Isla Fisher. I'm in love with her. I don't remember her name. She's beautiful. Uh, yeah, Isla Fisher. Isla basically. Fisher. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, he's ripped. And I guess I'm not ripped, but I'm in shape because I've been swimming. I, swimming is a key. My coach told me about swimming. Mm, I've been wanting to I wish for I cardio and stuff. All I, the swim. I joined I a, a gym. I don't know to where swim. I go to. There's rec centers, I guess, like YMCA. There, there is a pool somewhere around here. I don't know um, if I trust LA public. Pool. Actually, you know what? There is one. There's an outdoor. There's an outdoor pool. Do you guys talk about the town you're in? Uh, not. We don't talk about where we personally live, but people know but this is this. Burbank. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because um, in Burbank there is a bunch of outdoor pools I swim in. But they're usually in summer, so maybe there's an indoor one. But yeah, our neighbors have pools. Maybe we can just, just kind of climb the fence. Ooh, go for a little dip. One of the neighbors, a guy across the street, literally backed out of his driveway in his very expensive car at like 20 miles an hour, right in front of me, That's and what expected they do. me to stop. I guess that when is I was what in, they do. I was the flow of traffic, and he, his wife, 
like really stared at me like what are you doing why they act you like you're the welcome to like they'll, they'll, yeah. they'll drive right past stop crazy. signs and like look at you this okay, okay I, i've me, had this problem this in, in yesterday areas of la a lot burbank yes drivers i'm, I'm, yes. I'm getting off glendale off of, it's glendale I'm as well an exit and you turn right mm -hmm. so there's two lanes to turn right mm -hmm. i'm in the far left one so i'll be in the left lane because i don't have to turn left yep because i plan ahead yeah yep. the other driver to my right is in a truck he's supposed to cut across you in the middle of the turn, he starts to come across. With the and blinker so, anything or? Huh? Did you use a blinker or did you just no, go right No, he just right started right? coming across. And so I honk at him to like, hey, I'm right here. You yeah, yeah. into me. And I see, he looks over in his mirror. He's like, he's like 67, whatever. Yeah. He like looks over his mirror and just. Flips just you off? flips me <gasps> off in the mirror and just drives off. Dude, I'm like, LA how is in your insane. head do you just think that you're. The good one, or do you think people are sometimes comfortable? With I think it's like every a, driver yeah, around. It's like a self-entitled, like I don't care you're mad, and I'm flipping you off to let you know. Don't tell me I'm doing something wrong. Yeah, because I can do whatever I want. <laughs> yeah, thing. like, like but you uh, can't. You shouldn't. Like, it, 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 it sounds. It sounds like a cliche, and I don't like ever saying bad things about LA because I absolutely love LA, and I always talk about the good things because everyone's always talking about the bad things of LA. And it's like very hip to like trash the the pollution and the drivers and like you know lame Hollywood famous mm -hmm. ego people but driving is actually really bad it's hell here if he did yeah. that to the wrong person Glendale though, is the worst has the highest insurance for yeah. cars because it's the worst know, drivers in the country when I lived in Glendale that was the first time I got a car mm -hmm. uh, and that's the first time I had to get car insurance and that was in Glendale yep. and I was like why is this so expensive and that's when I found out because yep. Glendale has the worst drivers in the entire country the insurance rates are the highest and Burbank's not far behind Yeah, and uh well, everyone, um, the majority of people in Glendale have very nice cars and yes. they drive fast. And I'll tell you a little story. When I got that Audi that time in 2012, it was very easy to drive fast because the car just moved. And I didn't realize how fast I was going. So I think maybe that is part of it. It's like some people just don't know when you're in a BMW and it's so, so smooth and so strong and powerful. It's like just goes and you forget how fast you're going. I then switched from that car. I had like, I got rid of that car. I was like, this is stupid. It's too much money for me to spend on a car. I got like basic cars after that and like whatever, Toyotas and stuff. And then I had this 1972 BMW, but it was like a tin can. It was very old, only had four speeds. It didn't go over like 40 miles an hour. I learned, I went from the extremes of like how bad I can drive with a nice car. And I think it's because all these people have nice cars and they're so entitled. Also, when you have money, money, money you think you're cool and you, yeah. want, you just don't care about other people. I didn't like being that way. So I got rid of the nice cars. I didn't want to become that kind of person. So I got the slowest car possible and it put me in a reality check. But yeah, Glendale, super expensive. We got hit in Glendale once. This guy rear ended us. Uh, came out like, he, he was fucked out, up, kind of like fucked up. And I think he was on like painkillers or something. He made he a call, like, and some other dude just came out of oh. nowhere. Some guys like showed up to the scene. He just like called some dudes. They showed up, and then we just kind of left because I, there was no damage. I've seen. I could go down. I could talk all night about the crazy accidents I've seen in LA and the weirdness that happens during them and after them. People straight up running away. Oh, hit and run. Yeah, so all the time. Here. I experienced that in 2006 when I first moved here. My friend Jared got hit twice. He parked his car in a neighborhood street. But then he walked to the gym in West LA twice his car. Got, he walked, came back out from the gym. His car was just crushed. Like the doors just crushed. No, 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 nothing. People just hit the cars all the time. I saw this one girl. I was coming from the Upright Citizens Brigade at night, coming back to Glendale. And it was like that, that road where you're driving. I can't list it, but you're getting up, coming up to the, you're going towards like Universal. It's like that side road that goes along the highway. I know and you get on the it's highway. The LA River. Yeah. And there's like kind a Universal. Of. Lots on the other side. If you're side. like leaving like that Scientology Center area, that famous one near, you know, the Upright Citizens Brigade in Franklin? Yeah, yeah, we we did UCB. Well, around there, you're getting on the highway. I was getting, there was a person, a girl came off. She came s driving straight off the highway, didn't stop and slammed into an apartment building up onto the sidewalk. The and people fuck? head on. They both got out. It was, she looked like a, she looked like a model, like a cliche, like blonde, long hair, skinny, like very attractive. And the guy was like a hot LA guy. And they were in a, one of the big Range Rover SUVs and they both just started walking away. I was driving my little BMW and I was right behind them. Started I pulled walking away. They started, both of them started walking on the street. And I was like, oh, they're like on a daze or they're confused or whatever. And I was like, stay right here. Everything's okay. Uh, someone in the apartment or I called 911. I can't remember. And the guy started running. He ran, he was scrambling up the hill, like vines and stuff to get escape the situation. And as before he left, he goes, I can't be here. I can't get caught for this. They were both on drugs. 
And of she course. started wandering around, didn't get far. Police came, saw her, and then they found the guy. And that was that was recently. It happened again with my friend. I got hit, and the guys tried. They didn't have licenses, and they weren't illegal in the country. And they started driving away with like two broken front wheels, and the car was going. <laughs> it was like wasn't driving after they hit us, and then they started like twisting it, saying like, "Oh, you're gonna get sued for being in the road." And we're like, "We're just driving through a green light," and they sideswiped us or whatever. Anyways, there's been so many situations in Los Angeles of like insane you accidents. Just gotta be careful. And everyone tries oh, to run away from it. Yeah. I, yeah. No, the craziest one I ever saw was I was in an Uber on my way to Burbank from Glendale. And I see this, this like white sports car fucking, it was like a Porsche or something goes like past. It had to be going like 110 miles per hour. Uh, and then not even five minutes later, like my Uber pulls up and stops in the highway. And we're, I'm one of the first cars back behind this wreck that had just happened. Yeah. And it's that car and it's completely ripped in <gasps> half. And there's another oh car God. that's just totaled that I guess he hit uh, and knocked them off the road. And uh, the guy that was driving the white car that mm -hmm. hit the other person gets out and he's, he's like screaming and he, and he's like going to try, he runs to try to attack the <gasps> people from the, the people other he hit. Yeah. Uh, and then, People live in their own. No, I know. Dude, I get just pissed off seriously. listening to like Dude, people's yeah, acting yeah. like this. I, but I, the craziest part though oh, was there was evil. this black Escalade that pulled up really fast. These guys in black suits jump out. They grab the guy trying to fight the people. They get him in the car and they just take off. What? And I was like, you saw this? Yeah. I, I asked Ross. Ross was there. I, I was like, dude. This I wonder if it was like his bodyguard type people and he's like a r famous rich person or something and they were like getting like, him out of the situation. The mafia, you can't be assaulted. You, you can't assault someone. Like, And also we got to get you out of this wreck. Because he, I, yeah. he was, I guarantee he was driving under the influence. I wonder if they're like part of his party and they're like driving behind him or something yeah, I think and they're they coming were. after him. That, did you ever hear the crazy story about, it was a couple years ago in Glendale. The guy, it was like a Guy lived in Glendale. His family was really worried about his driving and he thought he was going to kill himself. They sacrificed a goat. This was like, in the, like I got in the news and I, so this is where it gets really, this, this is twisted. They That's sacrificed the a goat. Part. That's not the twisted part. They sacrificed a goat in Glendale to help him as a, like there's a thing they thought to do in the, from their like culture or religion or whatever to help this guy because they thought he was going to kill himself. He was dry. It was on, the five, if you're coming from Burbank into Glendale or going to like Atwater area, yep. you know where the golf course is on the uh -huh. right, there's an exit right there before Atwater. There's a sign up above. He I saw this. The guy crashed, went out of his windshield and went up and splat on that exit sign up yeah. on the green, like 30 feet up. He hit it and he was laying up on the little you know, this ledge up on the thing. And um, I heard about this. People were talking about it. And I drove by like the next day and I saw the stain from the dude on the sign. And the goat, I, I think the worst thing is poor goat died for nothing because that a-hole just got killed. And I saw that. I saw pictures from that. Uh, like it was basically it was, it was on Reddit or something once where it was just like, like this guy crashed his car and literally ended up on the exit sign. Yeah. Uh, it was unbelievable. I mean, you have to not be wearing a seatbelt. No, definitely not. Or he's just going so ridiculously fast. It just like ripped. He rips right through everything. That's insane. I Well, I actually, I know that exit and I take that exit all the time. I didn't yeah. know that that was the exit. It's so that Now every time I pass that I, sign, I I'm going to be like, time, oh. They changed it. I remember they, one time they like removed a part and reprinted or whatever and I see, cleaned the sign. I always wonder, like, because if you drive on the highway and you pay attention to it, usually you don't think about it. But if you pay attention, you'll see like, big red stains on the highway sometimes like yeah, splatters yeah. and i'm like i wonder if that's from like oh, someone like from a car crash you just reminded me of the most traumatic experience i've ever had i can't believe i forgot to t I, I had to tell you the story it's another car accident this is a pretty morbid episode uh you're doing here i'll say it quick uh this was 2012 i was driving i lived in santa monica my girlfriend lived in silver lake and i was dri I drive it late at night to go see her because there's crazy traffic to like 10 p.m yep i was driving on the 405 uh almost at Culver City and or actually it's about Culver City and there's no cars on the road because it's like 11 o'clock and then I see a car in the middle of the street and a person like walking around then I see, see another I see smoke and I see another car I'm mean, coming up with all these cars like slowly I started slowing down and I genuinely thought I was in a scene for a movie and this is like you're so used to like I was working in a lot of commercials and doing a lot of TV stuff at the time. And it's just like, everything's fake in LA, you know, and everything's a set. It's my brain went there. I was like, Oh, what's happening right now? Cause there's no one around. It didn't seem real. 
I pulled over and I even got in the lane because I was running over to all the cars. Cars were smashed. People were all over the highway. There was a guy with his head against the steering wheel going like, uh, like making noises. And there's this one girl screaming. She's like, get him, get him. I was like, it was pandemonium. There was a guy walking down off the highway, down the bushes into like the, like the slants into like off the highway. I didn't know what was happening. Then the fire department showed up. They, it was like the weirdest thing. It was so creepy. It was so silent. The fire department showed up. They got out of the police, the truck. And I was like, there's a guy over there. His head's like, stop. I think he's alive, but he's like making noise. Like, go to him. I was like trying to like, I was just screaming and saying stuff to these firefighters. They didn't look at me. They didn't speak. They didn't say anything. They just some like quietly. Wa- I was like, are these like robots? No one's reacting. No one's saying anything. They walked over. They looked at the guy. Walked over in the car, looked at the other guy. They were assessing the whole situation so calmly and coolly. It felt to me a little too slow, but I guess this is how they're trained to do it. And then the one guy, one fireman was like, you can leave. Just don't, don't, don't stick around here. We just get out of here. Cause we have to like do stuff here. And I was like, I was like, I, I almost didn't go into shock because I, I should have, but I didn't think it was real. It was felt so surreal. And I remember I told Siobhan, the girl was saying about it. Like I couldn't stop talking about it all night. I was like, I can't believe I just saw it was unbelievable. There was like dead people and stuff all over the street. I, sorry, I'm talking about this. This is so morbid, but like you're, you brought it up. You're asking, I was like, I gotta tell this one. That's this is insane, the, this is the big one. It was wild. So yeah, sorry. This is the worst episode you've ever had. No, it's a great podcast. episode. It's a great episode. <laughs> Who would want to listen to that? I, I I, I'm just now thinking, like, why did I tell? That no, story? I enjoyed listening to. I it. guess it's got something I experienced. And I kind of just wanted to say because it's like I still can't believe I saw it. It was wild. It Layton was... told some pretty fucked up stories. Our, uh, oh, really? Our employees about okay. me for Facebook and what he had to see there. Wait, what? What He's happened like there? Film type shit. Because people, you know, his, his job was to basically like go through people's like private messages and flag things for like oh, terrorist activity. Oh, wow. And he would see like everything. Layton, who I met? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Holy crap. That's he actually wild. just got a settlement from Facebook for it. Because all the people that had that job, there was a big class action lawsuit. And they just gave everyone a settlement. Why? Because like trauma- it was yeah. post-traumatic and stuff uh-huh. like that? Because people got like really fucked up. I wouldn't be surprised. That's insane. I saw like everything. What else is insane is these ad reads. (laughs) Have you ever stepped out of the shower and realized that your absolute fave pair of undies is dirty? (laughs) And wait, actually, all of your undies are dirty? And oh no, you're about to go on vacation and you don't have a single pair to pack? First of all, same. (laughs) Second of all, it doesn't have to be this way. When you have a free to join membership with MeUndies, you watch your undie anxiety melt away. I don't wear underwear anymore if it's not MeUndies. MeUndies is so soft with that micromodal fabric. All I do is wear MeUndies. My entire underwear drawer is just beautiful folded up pairs of MeUndies. They smell good. They're soft. I love wearing them every day on my penis. Come on, guys. When's the last time you refreshed your undies drawer? Do you, do you really want to be wearing those old those old dollar store undies with, with holes in them and, and skin marks? No. You got to get the soft stuff. The MeUndies membership is literally designed to make your life easier. With free shipping and returns on every order, savings on virtually everything they make, exclusive sales, and early access to their newest stuff, there's kind of no reason not to join. New prints drop monthly, so there's always something new to see. You can always skip delivery for the month or even cancel any time. No questions asked. Seriously, you gotta do you. Get super soft undies, bralettes, or socks shipped right to your door and live a more comfortable life, knowing you always have what you need at your fingertips when you step out of the shower. MeUndies has a great offer for listeners of Super Megacast. For any first-time purchasers, you'll get 15% off. For a limited time, if you sign up for the free-to-join MeUndies membership, you'll get 25% off your first membership item. Woo! So to get 25% off your first membership item or 15% off your first order and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash SuperMega. That's MeUndies.com slash Super Mega. Today's episode of the Super Mega Cast is brought to you by Keeps. More than 50 million men in the U.S. suffer from male pattern baldness, and that's where Keeps comes in. Keeps has more five star reviews than any of the competitors. There are only two FDA approved medications that can prevent hair loss. Keeps offers both. Keeps offers a simple, affordable, and stress free way to keep your hair via con- convenient virtual doctor consultations and medications delivered straight to your door every three months. You don't have to leave your home. Isn't that great? They have 24-7 care and support. Keeps has a network of expert medical advisor, advisors, prescribers, and care specialists to support you in making your hair goals a reality. It, it also comes at a low cost. Treatments start at just $10 per month, and Keeps offers generic versions of the two FDA-approved medications to prevent hair loss. Treatment plans are affordable, typically eh, half the cost of pharmacy prices. 
keeps us everything your hair needs, delivered straight to your door with discreet packaging and proven results. Oh, buddy, I'm scared. I'm scared sockless to lose my hair. I don't want to lose it, so I use Keeps. That's right, me, Ryan McGee. I use Keeps to keep my hair. Yep, remember, prevention is key. Treatments can take four to six months to see results, so act fast. When it comes to your hair, save more and spend less. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash super mega to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash super mega to get your first month free. Keeps.com slash super mega. I do get a lot of people like from your audience who just say they want me to beat you. It's so funny how they're like against they you. But they're yeah. your fans. <laughs> no, we, they, they, that's like kind of like a repertoire is they, they shit on us. But like, because we gaslight them so much, they gaslight us. Like every top comment in a video will be like, it's like. I don't know if those ones are the gaslighting type though. They might be, they might be truly rooting for your, for your death in the ring. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> well, we'll have to see, won't we? <laughs> we will. I doubt. <laughs> Woo! It's funny because that merchandise with the tombstone, I thought that'd be a really funny idea. I was like, oh, maybe a couple of my audience members would buy some of the tombstone merch with your name on it. Did it sell well? It's, I think I haven't checked the numbers, but like I get a notification in discord every time someone buys that merch from that site and it's going off quite a bit. People are getting the underwear. I saw it on an apron last night. Someone got an apron with Matt Watson. Well, someone's going to be out there cooking dinner with just my, like, my <laughs> so gravestone. Funny. I was thinking this is kind of like smart because it's advertising your name. It gets you out there. I mean, I'm making all the money off it. But then I had to put my name on it somewhere. So I said, oh, paid for by Nathan Barnett. So they remember. Yeah, I, I laughed who my ass off when I got mine and I looked at it and I saw that. I, I thought, thought it was hilarious. I was like, okay, that's a way for me to get my name in there and also be like bragging that I like, this was my idea to like put your I name laughed on my ass so. off when I saw that. Otherwise, I, um, it would be like just an ad for you and I wouldn't be benefiting from it. So I was like, see, Nathan's oh. selling all these shirts and my tombstone on it. If I end up actually dying at some point you said that earlier like, and I felt bad or like, something oh, those I shirts are going to be really awkward I, I think that everyone's going to have that shirt and be like oh yikes uh, <laughs> yeah well maybe they'll be worth more here if I if I die sometime soon you, you you guys can still wear those shirts I give you permission it's totally cool it's not disrespectful I'll, I'll give them out half price <laughs> there you go what, what would you do if like I'll just like cost. one day like a couple weeks from now before the fight you know you and I uh, we're, we're talking about just like you know, fun stuff, you know, nice repertoire. And you just get like a, just like a knock on your door and it's a guy and you're being served and I'm suing you for, oh, what would for I do? using my likelihood. <laughs> your likelihood. Well, there's actually my another likeness. Matt Watson who's pretty well known out there. We don't know what, what Matt I'm talking about on the show. There's several Matt Watsons. Yeah. There are. There's, there's a, the car wow guy. I know there's, there's a, a bunch of them. There's, isn't there there's a the politician one? or something? I don't know about a politician, but I know about. Oh, maybe I, it's the car guy. Just the car guy. guy. He has a YouTube channel, like a car channel. Because someone asked me, they go, "Oh, the car guy," or they said something that they thought I was car fighting. Wow. There's a journalist, and I was like, "Who?" There's there's several journalists. One of them was very upset with. There's me. a YouTuber who uh, who found out about the whole like pedophilia oh, yes. shit on YouTube. Fuck that guy. Wait, what? Fuck that what, guy. What pedophilia stuff. Uh, you, there was like they're found out to be in terms of like. In kids content, content made for kids, there was like codes and signifiers from these groups. Oh, that whole in thing the with YouTube section. when they started cracking down a couple that of years. Yeah, like yeah. 2 I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So there was a guy named Matt Watson involved in all that. He's the one that oh broke, my God. He's the one that broke Oh, and it didn't off. you have to say I'm not that Watson? Yeah, I I, yeah, I went yeah, on the right. uh, official podcast, the uh Criticals one, and mm -hmm. that and that was like right the week it was happening. And I think oh, they brought me on that week because of that. And I just had God. to, I had to like just go on and be like, "That's not me. <laughs> I'm not that Matt Watson." And the worst part about it was, um, because it, because it had to do with pedophilia. Basically, you know, I'd been working on super. Did you have a song called "I Love My Dad" at that point? Uh, yeah. Where? Yeah, yes, I did. He, I, I father specifically stayed. I'm 18 in that song, though. Okay, I specifically okay, okay, stayed. Okay, okay. I've been fucking my dad since I was 18. Oh, okay, good, good, good. Uh, I for legal reasons, but yeah, yeah. basically, <laughs> what happens is because that's to do with pedophilia. This guy just dominates my search engine results. So it's Matt Watson pedophile matt watson pedophilia oh my like, god matt watson exposed it's like when, so when you when you, you don't search my name, name it wouldn't be like matt watson super mega matt watson youtube like it used to be like matt watson age it's yeah. like matt watson pedophilia and i'm like oh my fucking god dude you should change your name to just like matt mega for your, like your strange name and it's called hashtag wake up youtube 
And it all started from a guy known as Matt Watson. Now, <laughs> before we get into this, that's our old buddy, Matt Keemstar. Watson is a fraud, Good. and I'll, I'll save that. To you've been you've been uh, doing some live stream stuff with him, Matt Watson. And, I, a fraud. I, and I know. And, I'm this this I'm not trying to make any drama. Yeah, yeah. But I, I do, mean, but first I do, of all, I'm not friends with this guy. I no, I know. Say that. I know. But okay. I do notice that you do push back, and I, oh, yeah, and, I yeah. and I like that. It's very respectable. Because because we there's were, times where he tries to talk himself out of like I just sent him a picture of a, a witch, and it's yeah, a, yeah. he thought it's like come on, dude. You 100 like, know what you're doing. You're, you're not. I, in I almost school. felt like I know. Like, it was so. I had to be said. It's like uh, it's like the elephant in the room. That's the epitome of the elephant. You called in the him room. out beautifully. It wasn't even really calling out. It was just kind of like telling him like you knew what you were doing. It was just no, I didn't. It was so stupid to listen to someone say, all I did was send a picture to AB uh, with a picture of a witch because he's clearly indicating his wife looks like a witch. And it was just so obvious. I couldn't just go say nothing. I was like, oh, well, you knew what you were doing by doing that, obviously. And I thought he would he's, go, yeah, yeah, no, or whatever. He, he was like, but no. he kept denying yeah. it. And I was like, dude. Like, like an elementary no school student. Me. I know. caught in the cooking. Exactly. Jar. If it's he's like denying it. Literally no one believes him. Isn't he like 50 something? Like he's got to be a little more if like. he's denying it, then that just like, it's like, okay, so if you're, so you're just that stupid. Then. He's a grown man. He so should, he should he, be able to take things. He also, he said in that conversation, this is what we're, what we're talking about here is for the audience at home is the boxing, this promotion for the boxing event uh, that, there's a organization called Happy Punch that Keemstar is now part of. It was another dude who like ran this thing uh, who was like a boxing YouTube fan. And I used to go on his calls and now Happy Punch has taken that guy. He's like the host and he is working with Keemstar and it's like a whole official thing now. But the guy who who does the main host is a really cool dude yeah. who just loves like boxing and influencer boxing. So I've been doing it going on those. And now that Keemstar is doing it, Keemstar and I had a lot of beef up until a day ago. Really? Because he came into one of my live streams. He was in my game of Among Us. It was me, Nexpo, Justin Wang, <laughs> Night Docs. That girl, uh, Creep Show Art was in there. She got like canceled or something. There's a bunch <laughs> of people playing at Among Us in like the, the, the very beginning of the pandemic. And I was in character as dad. And I said, I listened back to it too. And it could sound like I was nagging him because I was trying to get his attention because everyone's talking. And I kept going, Keemstar, Keemstar. Because I was trying to say, I was just trying to like, break the ass to say something to him at first. And I was in character to be like, oh, I'm in a character. I'll, I'll let you know by doing this, by going, I was like, Keemstar, why are you up so late? Because he was in New York and it was late for me in LA. So I was trying to be like, you should be in bed. Very innocent, silly dad thing to say like, oh, don't play too late. And he just instantly twisted it. And like, he's like, who is this guy going Keemstar, Keemstar? And then next one was like, it's dad, the guy's gate server you're in, the discord and the game you're playing on right now. And he goes, who is this? And I don't say the R word like for mentally challenged people and or the C-U-N-T word. But he called he said, who is this R? These, what a C-U-N-T. Don't mind. He was just going off like because I said, hi, Keemstar. Why are you up so late? I was like, I don't think it's at all deserving for what he no, said. I mean, he's so I kicked him out of the game. He's a bit of a troll. You and know? he got mad. And then recently I tipster is a guy named tipster on YouTube who talks about stuff. And he's been a fan of my Keith character for a while. And I chat with him in his chats because he like is into games and stuff. So I go in his chat sometimes and talk to him and Keemstar was on the call with him recently. I didn't know this. I didn't know who was on this call. I just chat. I was going to bed and I said, hey, tipster, how's it going? Good. Have a good stream. Getting up for boxing in the morning. And then uh, tipster goes, oh, yeah, dad's in that bo in the IDubs boxing event. And Keemstar goes, oh, dad. F that guy. He's a loser. Blah, blah, blah. So it's going on. <laughs> and I was like, what the heck? He's still, I didn't think he would even remember. He was still mad about it. So I sent tipster. I shouldn't have done this, but I, I just, I don't, I don't want having negativity between anybody. Like I'm not trying yeah, to do that. And I feel that I said to tipster, I was like, Hey, can you tell him? Like, I didn't try to ever offend him. I wasn't trying to be mean. I don't have, I don't care about him. I know like his thing is kind of drama and like starting fights or whatever, but like, I don't want to have that. And then when I, so tips are, I think might've sent that to him a couple days later, I get on the first call for this boxing thing that we we're just talking about with Keemstar. And this, then the next one was the AB one where mm -hmm. I was defending AB and his wife and what Keemstar was saying about them saying, you know, what you're doing dude. But before that I said, T tipster uh, Keemstar was like oh dad's in here he's in the boxing event I think the guy's a loser I don't want to talk to him but you guys can and I said well hey man what? I go I have no problem with you I don't dislike anyone you know whatever this dude is live he live everyone's you? listening there's like a thousand people on the Twitter space listening to this uh. and he, ins he insulted dad and I was like I was like dude I don't have any hard feelings and he goes and he, this is what he said he goes I'll accept your apology 
I was like, there was no apology <laughs> anywhere. I'll but accept your apology. Whatever we want to be happy. Like, I, mean, I am down to keep the peace. I don't genuinely dislike the guy for any real reason. I don't think he should say some of the things he says, but like, ultimately, whatever, man. But if you want to ha- promote the saying, cool, I'm glad to be a part. And I even he has a boxing event possibly coming up. I would box on it because I just want to box and do more boxing. After this, so anyways, it then led to what we were talking about with AB, because he, he has a whole thing with a, AB, who's on the H3 he podcast. Hates AB, he, he hates, hates AB for some reason. Because he's linked. Well, Because he's cause, connected to Ethan. Yeah, yeah. But, they had a huge beef. But like, AB's wife is so innocent. And, no, right. and I know AB is playing the audio quotes of Keemstar on the podcast, so I guess that's his reason for disliking mm-hmm. AB. I think well, Keemstar AB goes for low Is AB the audio guy? I thought, I thought AB Zach played the clips. Someone. I really don't know, but I know Zach. since he's involved and maybe okay. laughs at things. Keemstar goes for really low shots, and like bringing someone's wife into it is exactly It was so necessary yeah. she's like not even like on the internet well it's just because he get like he gets away with it every time so but he never yeah. faces any and he was making so. excuses on the call for like i didn't know he would think i was saying his wife was a witch then why did you post a picture of to, why did you even send that picture i just sent a picture i just thought witch. he'd like to watch the wizard of oz you never see it was it. halloween i was saying happy halloween didn't make any sense but it's yeah ridiculous. i was kind of calling him out and apparently everyone in the boxing discord was like dude i can't they believe you said and i was surprised i was like oh i was just kind of like being logical i thought you were <laughs> but i don't know yeah i also got bullied very bad in high school i had to switch schools because i was physically getting bullied and really? stuff and my girlfriend got shoved into like a glass window and it, like they almost cracked it was when a whole when, thing when dad's in the ring is, is he going to picture his bully on the is on he going to look at me all, of a sudden, all those bullies are going <laughs> to all, of, were, were all bullies, of Nathan's memories are in dad like bot. Me? Uh, the bullies were a lot of different people actually one tall lanky guy who is one of my best friends now, but he was one of the bullies. Oh. Um, so maybe there, arc. maybe there's some best friendship in the future. But dad bot does have all of my core core memories okay. in him. It, all that repressed rage is going to suddenly <laughs> just the second he steps in the ring, just I would cry all the time at after school because I just was getting oh, bullied that sucks, so man. bad. Yeah, it was I'm sorry bad. to hear that. And I I finally got over it. I went to a hypnotherapist and it like literally changed my brain. It worked. I was bawling my eyes out. I, I was sitting with my my four year old self and my fourteen year old self, which is the one that experienced all the trauma. And this was when I was thirty one or something, like ten years ago. And it changed my life. I was going there to get over a Whoa. breakup because I was like so sad about the breakup and I just didn't want to be sad about it anymore. And it all came. She was like, I, it turned into being like the reason I was so sad about the breakup because I never let go of all this bullying that I went through. And I was st- such an, I am still kind of an emo person because of it. Like I can cry easily because I feel like a kind of a loser and a victim a lot of time because I had been for so long and I feel self pity, I guess is what it is. Yeah. But yeah, man, I got like thrashed all the time and I felt like a loser and no one, everyone hated me. I got dragged, the football team, I was in a skateboard with my friend on the street, had a wallet chain on, this is like 95 or whatever, and they drove by and grabbed my wallet chain and pulled me off my skateboard. And I, for a second, I dragged like next to the car until my pant loops oh. broke and my chain broke. And I could have got like run over by the wheel. It was bad. I went to a Papa Gino's, which is the pizza place in Massachusetts. And I walked in with my friend Jared, who played also played football, but he skateboarded as well. He and I were skating and ja- they said, Jared, you can stay, but he has to go. And I was like, I'm not going anywhere. I tried to like stand up to them. And I was like, I'm the eating Papa Gino's. And they went to the car, got baseball bats and started hitting me in the back with baseball bats. And I just ran away. It was Dude, like, I thought this gnarly. stuff only happened in movies. That's like, what that's everyone insane. says to me. Everyone says that to me. Medway, Massachusetts, man. It was a bunch of white, angry jocks. Well, it like, was really lousy. I know this stuff really does happen, but it's just like, I just never hear about I was it. I just only freak. see it in movies. It was, I was the freak because I don't know why I, had, I looked like it kind of like Kurt Cobain. I had like blonde hair to my chin. It was like long hair and I had stickers on my hat and I wore like long underwear that's what it was. It underneath, was it, I it, I didn't comment. One of the one of the guys, my ha- my egg got how ah uh, sorry I can't speak. My house got egged on Halloween one time. And this was the best. My dad is the coolest. My dad heard it happen. We were out trick or treating, and the football team egged our house. And my dad instantly ran outside because he was like giving candy out, and he was hanging out with my mom and her friend. And he ran down the street. It was it's a main street, like a pretty busy street. He's running down the middle of the street, chasing the car because he's trying to get the license plate number and. The cops came by and saw my dad running down the street. They're like, what are you doing? And he goes, those, that, those guys just egged my house. Cops 
chased them, caught the kids. And it was, was I had to go to a hearing because one of the kids, he was the richest kid in town. He, he was going to, he thought I, I was going to sue him for all the abuse he was putting on me. <laughs> and we, they, I wanted to have a hearing to like settle it. But like, we didn't want to sue or anything. They, they were like preemptively like trying to like stop us from retaliating. This guy was like messed up. He was very rich, very privileged. Like My parents like just did, he wanted him to go away. I ended up switching schools because just to get away from these kids. And then I got bull bullied there. And I had to go back. And by the time I came back, those kids had graduated. So the bullies, I was bully free at that point. But yeah, my dad, my dad was like, no nonsense. He chased those kids down the street. And the kid told my dad to the face that my kids were freaks. And my dad's like, you're a little Hitler. He said right to the kid. <laughs> you're a little Hitler. Yeah, it was gnarly. My high school was like pretty rough. And it was like, you wouldn't think so. But I guess I was the freak. And I wasn't even that weird. It was like everyone was weird in the 90s. How yeah. old were you in the 90s? Like 12? <laughs> How old was I in the oh, 90s? Probably, no, you probably you was born in 96. Born, oh, God. 96. How old was I in the 90s? This I was, was, I this, was born in 94. Nathan, my no, no joke. This was happening when you were falling out of your mother's. Like that year. I think it was 96. Dude, my earliest memory is 1999. The year I graduated, the Dreamcast, one of my favorite yeah, systems. It's my earliest memory I can remember is 1999. At the end of 1999. Because you were like, little fetus that I was like then. almost four, that's so weird it's so weird to age is crazy because like Once I don't a point, feel yeah. like an old person like I feel I, I don't know how you guys feel at 26 or however old you are I felt 14 forever and still do I feel like I got locked there but my body keeps changing and I just don't stop feeling 14 I feel like that was for me except it kind of happened around like 21 yeah yeah that was like your 21 lock yeah that's where like I feel like my lock was yeah 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 same and I and I recently really only in like the last years the first time it's like well, I feel like I'm like 21 but yeah I'm not and I'm 26 now. No. Nope. And like I look in the it mirror, changes when you hit 30. Skin, and I'm like, 30, you start to go, oh, now I'm like oh, an old shit. person. But 30 is not old. I'm just no, here. I, I am at 41 thinking, oh, I'm still not old at 50. I'm like, all right. But it always changes. It's like, like oh, 30 is old. No, no, 40 is old. No, 50. See, here I'm like, can't I'm, get away from I'm that. 28 going to 30. Well, you're 28. You're you older know, than that. years. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So I'm like, oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm racing towards 30. Yeah. But I mean, I heard 30s are awesome. I mean, it's, and they always say, and it's kind of true, like, Every decade, the later we get in the future, to the future is like the new 20. Like, but then there's a point where you can't get away from when you are 50, you can't be doing the stuff you're doing 20. You could probably do up until early 40s. You can make party and hanging out. But like, this is why I learned something a couple years, right before the pandemic. It was like February before Corona hit. Mm -hmm. I went to, I go to the Echoplex a lot and dance. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I listen, I like electronic music and I like dancing. It's a fun and venue. Like indie, yeah, they have like good indie nights there and they have mashup nights there that are uh -huh. really fun. And I remember going with my old girlfriend. We were like, everyone's our age. This was when I was 30, 31. Everyone was like late 20s, early 30s. And it was like hipsters and cool. And I went recently, all my friends kind of had left LA. A lot of people were gone. I was still going alone. I was, I guess if I'm 41 now, I was probably like, four, I'm sorry, 39 or something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't look like them. Everyone's got like cool everything. They're all like youthful in every way. And uh, I'm dancing. I love dancing. And I just feel awkward. I feel like a predator almost because people will look at this older person and think, oh, he's probably trying to pick up young girls. Cause that's what most people do. I'm not trying to do that, but I'm just so thinking about them doing that. It yeah. ruined my night. Yeah. I felt alone. I felt lonely because I saw no one my age there. And that's a real thing. I used to think it wouldn't matter, but like you can't hang out and do the young person things forever. I don't, but you don't, you don't look 40. I, I like, yeah, that's what I dub said to I, like, me. I don't, I don't think that's like, it's if, nice if, to if hear. I was there. <laughs> And I saw you dancing. I don't think it would ever cross my mind like, oh, what's this like old guy doing here? Yeah, yeah. Like, I would just wouldn't even think about like, it. Like, I have some friends who are older than me, like, by like a decade. And they, to me, feel like older people. I think it's like the way you live and how you act. It like, is. It's, I mean, it's honestly, it's like. I do useful things, I guess. I'm still making videos. and I jump around a lot. I'm active and I dance. And then I think I'm kind of still into like youthful stuff. Well, maybe I mean, you look point. great. I'm trying you. to. I mean, like, it's my shape because of the exercising right now. Normally, I'm just skinny. And like, yeah, you know, I'm trying to, uh, I used to look like Steve Brule. <laughs> now I want to turn around a bunch of, cause it's like, I'm 26. It's like, this is the, t I, I feel like I'm approaching that point where like, if I don't change a lot of my habits now, then they catch up yeah, yeah. later. And then also I'm trying to, uh, do like sunscreen every day and facial moisturizer because I've, I started I've doing seen, that. Well, I, my brother's skin is so much better than mine. Cause he is on top of that. Yeah, no, I, I, I've seen, I saw a comparison where it was a uh, two twins mm -hmm. and they were both like 80 and one of them did sunscreen and moisturizer like every day from when she was in her like mid twenties uh -huh. and the other one never used it. And it's like, 
She looks like the wrinkles years are, young. Yeah, it's insane. I have crow's feet right here because I never wore sunglasses until two years ago. And I'm always, always squinting. I didn't like oh. sunglasses. So I wear sunglasses now. I use moisturizer. I use sunscreen. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to look like, yeah, there's some people who I know who look 60 when they're in their 40s. Yeah. Because they're just like, you know, not active and doing the right things. Well, some people are just naturally blessed with good skin. Yeah, you, you do Dan. have good skin. What? Uh, Dan. <laughs> And mom. <laughs> oh, Anne. Oh, oh. Well, Danny as well. Well, actually, no. Danny kind of looks a little bit. Yeah. You know, old. Your skin is good, right? His Thank hair you. and his skin. He's Thank got you. incredible genes for yeah. hair and skin. Yeah, you got thick hair and you don't have any wrinkles in your face. Mm. No, you don't. Like, I always look at the eyes. I, like, when someone smiles, there's, if there's, there's a little bit. When I was 24, I go trick-or-treating still. And in Santa Monica, when I was 24, when we first moved out here, a girl... I had face paint on and you can see crow's feet through like makeup on the face. You know, we were the warriors from we were the base, no baseball fury. I think they were in the movie, the warriors. I forget the baseball team. We dressed up as them girl who was my age. I was like, Oh, I asked her out as she gave me candy. Cause I thought it'd be funny. It's like, Oh, I'm trick or treating, but I'm her age. So may as well ask her for a date. And, uh, she goes, she goes, I'm not going out with a trick or treater. And, uh, I was like, what? I'm young. And she's like, no, you're not. You got crow's feet. And that's the first time I heard that. I was like, what? She was like, I see the wrinkles in your eyes at 24. I was like, then I always stopped started thinking about it Jesus at that point, Christ. 24 years old. Do you I have them? I looked up close in certain light. If I look up close in the mirror, I can kind of. How do you tell if you have like. When you, you smile, have I have them. If you look here, it's like these little wrinkles. But then if you like stop smiling, you still see yeah, them Yeah, so bit. I can kind of start to see it. Yeah. A little bit, like They'll if I look stay. up close in the mirror and I'm like, oh shit. And also the fucking... The brow. Oh, for the I've, all, I've always had tons of lines on my forehead, even as a you teenager. Can, see if you can see it. I'm doing this and you see yeah. this a little bit. When I do not do it, there's like, there's still lines like here. Yeah, but like, that's not like age. That's just like not? your face shape. Because your skin has to go somewhere when you scrunch it. True. You know, your skin has to push against itself. I don't know. My friend oh. has a little dent here under his forehead, so he gets it filled with something. It's like... It's Botox? like it's like Botox, I think. So he doesn't have a dent. They okay. just like squirt it every year or something. In his head? Yeah. He's got like a dent in his forehead. He so smiles. they just like it's like a little empty spot. Like a little plant something in his, in his head. All right, man. Uh, he brought it up so many times. This is being ridiculous. I can't tell if you're doing a bit or if you're just trying to be a jerk. <laughs> so we've this has been like an hour. We should just wrap this up. I gotta go do other stuff. I'm kidding, dude. It's no, dude, that's not funny. It's like you're you're being mean. I, I legitimately didn't think it was that big. I mean, deal. I, I thought I actually. I mean, I know, but like it feels like you're teasing now. I, I no, I'm I, down to go along with a bit, but it just doesn't. I well, no, like when you said don't bring it up, I thought you were joking. So I. Oh uh, well, oh, but also no. it, it's like I don't think I don't I don't know why you need to be so sensitive about it. I'm not sensitive about it. It's just bit. because it's only because I have to like go above and beyond to explain to people, and then it just sounds like I'm making excuses about how I don't care about it, and it becomes a whole thing. Well, yeah, I just, it really I sounds just like try you to care about it. it now because you're going so exactly, and that's about what I'm it. saying. It does sound like I care about it when if you, I truly if you didn't don't, say if you uh, didn't get mad at me in the first place and say oh you don't have to talk about that. Then I just don't want to talk about it because it becomes a whole thing where I just be like I don't. You made it a thing. I mean, oh, we haven't, dude. we we haven't, we got us, we have, we haven't finished the, um, I'm, I'm just saying like, we can't end on this. Yeah, no, I know, note. I know. And I'm like, I truly we've don't, never had I a truly guess don't been, care about it. I don't. You don't. But, yeah, that's why but you're I'm trying to avoid, I'm it. trying to avoid having to say, hey guys, I don't care that I get hair transplant, but I did do it just for characters because then it just sounds like I'm making excuses. So I just try to avoid the whole thing in general. I made a post about it on Instagram and be like, look guys, I got, I, I moved some hair on my head so I could do characters better. And yes, there's a bonus that I now have some thin bangs, but I don't think I have like amazing hair. You made a post, it's why just do you not fucking funny care if I bring it up? Because it's not, I mean, it's, A, people might not be laughing because like, oh, he's just kind of being mean. I just don't see the comedy in it's that. It's not mean, dude. It's a well, you're fucking just comedy podcast me. and you're, you're, you're the one that's bringing up the fucking crack smoking. I, I stopped and I was, I could have said something right now and you just yeah, said you brought it, it up twice because what am I supposed to do you back me into a corner where I'm like oh yeah I, I got a hair transplant because you know it helps me with acting and it, yeah it's cool I guess that I got but like you were straight up doing drug, drugs which is bad drugs for you help me with acting Moving crack, my, crack helps oh, come with fucking acting on, dude, shut up man stop I you, you know all what right, dude alright alright I don't want to Oh, what, what, you, hey, you, you, you hey. gonna leave? Uh, can you just, like, delete the whole thing, man? This is no, stupid. we're not gonna delete the, come on, dude. I'll hey. just cut out, I'll just cut out all the jokes. I, Stop, dude, dude I flew down here, it cost me $2,000, I didn't get to, there's no podcast I'm supposed to do, I can't do it, I'm here literally for this hour, for a weekend, for $2,000, and it was just, like, a waste oh, of wait, my time. Oh, maybe you have more money if you didn't spend it on such all shitty right, hair transplants. Whoa, hey, 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 stop, stop, hey, guys, Siri, fucking asshole, stop, stop, fuck, hey, 